Hi, I'm Sarah Michelle, and I'm going to look through my iconic moments with E.T. They made me say iconic. That was not my word. I know perfect way to show McDonald's how I feel. I go to Burger King. It was the first commercial that used another product's name. McDonald's sued Burger King and five-year-old me, which is interesting because do you know where most five-year-olds had their parties in the 70s? At McDonald's, yeah. It's funny. I do remember this because I wanted to eat a burger and I found out that they, uh, they glue all of the seeds on each burger. And so I couldn't eat any of them for television. And I was so bummed because you have a five-year-old little girl on a burger commercial and all she wants is a burger. Hi, E.T. Oh my God, I'm not quite ready yet. Oh my gosh. Hot rollers in my hair in my New York City apartment that I grew up in. Wait, this is, and I'm teasing my hair, of course. I mean, this is amazing. The then 17-year-old was nominated for her role as Kendall in the soap opera All My Children. Then you will leave, now. I'm not going anywhere. If you don't want me here, you're gonna have to throw me out. So now, how excited are you about tonight? Nervous, very nervous. Um, as you can see, I have no nails left. Okay, get them all off. I lost. It's okay. I got one the next year. I was the first person to wear a Vera Wang dress. Vera didn't make couture yet. She only made wedding dresses. But I knew Vera because I was an ice skater and she made ice skating dresses. And so I said, could I borrow one of your wedding dresses as an Emmy dress? And she's like, well, isn't that kind of weird? I was like, no, it's like a beautiful dress. And so that was the history of that dress. Three years later, she'd become Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I'm finally Buffy and not Kendall anymore. <laughs> Clearly, I still hadn't given up the teasing yet. Also, where are my eyebrows? What happened to my eyebrows? Background! Action. The prom is one of my favorite episodes of all time. I did not go to my high school prom because I went to the Emmys. And the prom, you know, people always talk about the body and Hush and, you know, some of the other. To me, the prom was everything that Buffy was about. It was, it was the recognize her. her and she thought that she was invisible and that they didn't know who she was, but they saw her for who she really was. Buffy Summers, class protector. People always ask me like, if there's a prop, I was sad I didn't keep the umbrella. Scream too. This was so much fun. This was so exciting for me. But they didn't let anybody read the script then. I was desperate to be in Scream too. I didn't care what the role was, didn't care. You can't just yell for the fun of it. It really, you have to be scared and terrified and screaming and it just, it was gut wrenching. I know what you did last summer with my green satin dress and that tiara that weighed like a good 40 pounds. And what's amazing is I am not a pageant girl, so I did not know how to wear a tiara at all. I was like, can I please knock it off my head when I run? That was all I cared about, and I did. So what do you do when you're really scared in a movie? I look for the cute boy next to me, and I grab on, and I curl in their lap. Is that cute boy next to me? Is that Freddy walking behind me right there? It was during the filming of I Know What You Did Last Summer that Sarah Michelle met her husband of 20 years. Uh, Freddie Prinze Jr. He's one of my best friends, and I would be anywhere for him. They made it official two years later. My boy, I'm as happy as can be. The couple have two children. Their daughter, Charlotte, got a shout out during her Icon Award speech. I have a daughter who's 13, and she wants to go into this field as well. And she's in middle school, which I think we all remember pretty much sucks. But there's a place for people like us where we fit in. I can't speak of myself and call myself an icon because that feels very odd, but I'm really, really honored. I mean, I'm hoping that this isn't some like retirement party they're throwing me. Me and Selma. Yeah. It did win me an MTV Movie Award for Best Kiss, and I'll always go back to Selma's mother. But did you guys have to use so much tongue? That's what Selma's mother always says. Selma's still, we're still my best on camera kiss. Oh. Ah! <laughs> Velma! What are you doing here? This ride was closed due to dangerous construction. Well, I signed on for the movie because there was a kiss with uh, 
me and um, Velma that got cut. There was a great line where I tell Fred that his ascot makes him look gay. Got yeah. cut. Now who's the damsel in distress? Me? Straight up. This was so much fun. So this was, I didn't have the hugest role in this movie, but they brought the Hong Kong Wire team from Matrix out to Australia. And so I would just train with them all day long, every day. It was one of the greatest experiences I've ever had learning from them. I just love your columns. They're so relatable. Thanks, well, I try. It's like I'm you. Or I will be when I turn 30. <gasps> Sex in the City. This is a great story. I was desperate to be on it, and Darren had written me a couple roles, and I couldn't get out of Buffy to film, and I was really upset. And he said to me, we're coming to LA, I'll make it work. So he wrote this role, I worked all day on Buffy. I had like two hours in between, I had a 10 p.m. call time for Sex and the City, and I said, are you gonna get to me? Because I've been working since like five, we're gonna get to you, we're gonna get to you. I got there at 10 p.m., they got to me at 5 a.m. or 4.30 a.m. the next day. So I was delirious doing that scene, but I was also deliriously excited. So, big news. I have a star interested. I mean, I feel like the D girl, which is what she was then, is now probably running a studio and maybe she has a place to come back. Michael Patrick King, are you listening? What do you think about that? Oh gosh, the grudge. I will, <laughs> I will never forget this. Well, first of all, they did not have hot water. So it was freezing. And let me, oh God, it's so creepy. That is so creepy. And you know, Japanese culture is a, a more prudish culture. So while I didn't care about what I was wearing in the shower, oh, did they care. You've never seen a set clear out faster. Like nobody wanted to see anything. <laughs> Grudge was a really big deal. I think for a very long time, it was the second highest female opening movie ever. I mean, I'm sure it's been beaten since then, but I would bet it's probably still in the top five or 10 because Movies are still really hard to have a sole female above the title on her own. Like, it's still not really done. Someone asked me today, actually, one of the students said, you know, what's it like now that, like, you're this icon and people are working with you? And I said, the only time I really ever experienced that was when I was on set with Robin. Dad! What? Honey, look, I got him on the ropes. Does he not look gas? Come on, bring it! You knock me down, Ray! <laughs> Knocked out by a girl! Robin, I can't say enough about him, and I was so lucky to not just get to work with him, but to know him as a person. He changed a lot of how I behave on set and how I want to react to everybody else, and I was so nervous, and nervous to make suggestions, and nervous to try a joke out or any of those things, and Robin made everybody so comfortable, and he made sure everybody felt like the big star in that room, and I hope to be just a little bit like that.